Hey guys, hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This, of course, is Blue Stinger, a game that we covered quite some years ago. Uh, I've suddenly had the itch to play this again um, for quite some time, actually. It's an interesting game, and what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to load our save. Uh, from way back when we did it originally. Uh, what that's going to give us, basically it's a new game plus kind of dealio. So we're going to start off with some money and we're going to start off with 100 health drinks uh, as well. Now, that might actually seem a bit cheaty, but there is a reason why we're going to do this. Um, the more times you complete this game uh, on one save file, you will uh, unlock certain bonuses as the game goes on. Uh, for instance, I think if you finish it four times, you unlock some secret weapons that you can't actually buy in the game. And that's what I would eventually like to, to show off at one point. Obviously, we're not going to do this uh, in this playthrough, but it is going to go uh, towards making that goal a reality at some point. So, we're going to load the game. Um, just because why not? I did start playing this a while ago, uh, refamiliarizing myself with it, uh, and I was, <laughs> I was enjoying it loads. But I've been so bogged down with uh, other projects at the moment, I haven't really had time to really dig in and enjoy it. But anyway, without any further waffling, let's get back into Blue Stinger. And guys, I am looking forward to this. Um, I have my Retro Fighters control pad here, which is so, so much better than, than the awful Dreamcast control pad. The only problem is, uh, I've tried a lot of games with this, um, this control pad. This game, however, does not seem to like the um, analog stick whatsoever. I'm going to give it another go in a minute and see what's changed. Um, but there's some weird glitches that happen when you use the analog stick. If you use the D-pad, it's fine. And I always pretty much play this game with the D-pad. Because the analog stick control in this game is shit. It always has been. It's, uh, it's not really an analog compatible game. Uh, it was very much made with a D-pad in mind, I believe. Uh, and we'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, let's hit up our save and uh, load this. Man, I can't believe this clear save's been here for that long. But there we go. Don't you love memory cards? Let's go, guys. Once more, we're feeling. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you. There we go. Yes. I always get so excited with this music. It's so epic, man. It's crazy how good the soundtrack of this game is. Uh, right, 200 AD. A great earth um, earthquake rocks the Yucatan Peninsula, causing an area of land 400 kilometers in diameter to sink into the ocean, leaving behind only a small island at the exact center of the sunken area. Researchers are astonished to find that the area of land lost to the earthquake is exactly the same size as the meteor, which caused the extinction of the dinosaurs 650 million years ago. This connection to a long-forgotten past gives the new island its name, Dinosaur Island. Mm-hmm. Christ, that scrolls quickly. But seriously, how good is this music? Climax graphics. Love it. So 2018, present day. Oh, man. 2018. Bloody hell. Just off the shore of Dinosaur Island, 
you know, this vis these visuals were pretty gnarly uh, back in the day. It was really exciting um, having full motion video like this, but <laughs> they really didn't look that good. Um, and they've aged awfully. Especially the animation. Hey, Tim. <laughs> What's up, Elliot? Elliot? Why do you think Kamiratech built such a huge research lab on such a tiny island? Sometimes I don't understand what big wigs are thinking. I'm just a crew member of the supply ship. Heck, I don't even get permission to enter the <laughs> residential district on the island. What the hell would I know about that? This is a pretty fancy boat for just a crew member. It's not mine. I rented it from the Kimura Tech Group. Captain Dogs has a very Captain good Captain Dogs. He talked to them. I got the ship. With one condition. We have to decorate the boat before I return it to them. We? Decorate the boat? The Kimura Tech Group wants to have a Christmas party on this ship. I thought I told you. I never heard about that. It's not that hard. We can finish by tomorrow morning. Come on, I don't want to work. This is my first vacation Damn. I got in two years. Yeah, the sound mix is terrible, I will say. Um, the music just totally drowns out the dialogue in a lot of areas. Nothing I can do about that, obviously. Uh, but yeah, is that subtitles would have helped. Decoration? You're already preparing for the party? What is that? A Nephrim. It's a character. Angel series. An angel of good luck. It's a limited edition. You hang this on at the ship's bow for protection. Pretty neat, huh? Well, looks like shit just got real. What, what, what's going on? Tim, start up the engine. Where to? <laughs> Well, 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 that's something uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, I assume.
Well, we have suicidal dinosaur bugs. I mean, that's that's the thing that totally just happened. Not really sure what that's about, but hey, I'm sure we're going to find out. Hmm. As we start our adventures on Dinosaur Island. Man, what a game this is. And what an intro as well. It really doesn't give you much. Um, and not in a bad way either. So here we are on Dinosaur Island in the futuristic year of 2018. I mean, this game came out in like 2002. So, oh my god. That's like 16 years ago. That's really f fucking weird thinking about the fact that when I first played this, 2018 was like, oh my god, man, we're going to have like flying cars and I don't know lace up shoes and stuff lasers to cut slices of bread with I don't know and now we're <laughs> 2018 that was like two two years ago what what <laughs> what is time where are we what's going on holy crap oh man well Nephrim seems to be uh Trying to at least lead us somewhere. So, if I use the analog stick, yeah, you can see as we move the analog stick around, it is fully depressed. Yeah, we have some very strange movement um, patterns, but this game never really seemed to um, play well with quickly turning directions anyway, as you can see as I quickly move the D-pad around. Now, the D-pad on this control pad is super... Herb. It is way better than that shit that was on the official control pad. But here we are. As Elliot Ballard, we are an ESA rescue agent. Um, we're on Dinosaur Island. Some shit just got real. A meteor crashed from outer space. Seemed to, the way it was moving, it, it certainly seemed to know what it was doing anyway. And appears to have destroyed the island. And also, somehow, we can go into like a first person view. There we go. Yeah, so if we use the analog stick in this first person view, it actually works fine. It's only when uh, moving the character. Uh, and I've tried numerous games with this control pad, and they all work fine. So it is the game. Uh, so this, we're in some kind of time bubble here. Something is is not right, shall we say. Now, I remember being absolutely blown away by the visuals of this game. You have to remember, you've got to put yourself back in the time. We had the PlayStation 1. Um, I don't even think the PlayStation 2 was quite out yet. So we had like the PlayStation 1 and the N64. Now these visuals were transformative at the time. They were, it was such a generation ahead. Uh, the world is so, yeah, okay, you can laugh at it a bit now, but for the time it's so detailed. Anyway, let's start moving in. Ooh, press the start button. This is Elliot Ballad, Easter Troop C730, over. This is Janine King. KISS Dinosaur Island Security Office. Currently, the island is under an emergency situation. Do you read? Dispatch D7 equipped ready. Located in. Damn it! I got cut off. Yeah, you can also see the lip sync is awful. Now, in the original Japanese version of this game, um, and I think it's an unlockable. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, I will look into it a little bit. The camera angle was totally different. Uh, originally, it had a very Resident Evil style static camera um, angle a thing going on. It was only with the Western release they put it. They gave us this third person action cam, which is interesting. So as Elliot, we can actually melee, which was really freaking cool at the time. Uh, and we'll be relying heavily on melee. Uh, we also have weapons as well. We can get guns and things and all that delicious good stuff. Uh, we don't start off with anything, I don't think. No, we don't. So we, we have uh, back and short. So short is basically close combat weapons. And there is a whole load of weapons in this game. There's so many weapons in this game. And they're so fun. Anyway, let's keep going. Oh, hello. Dude. Uh, Now, something... I guess the big bearded man has disappeared. Maybe he's a merman. 
jumped into the uh, <laughs> jumped onto land to give us an energy drink, and then and then descended back yeah. into the watery depths. A small hassy, eh? What the hell's one of those? Mm, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, vending machines are a big thing in this game as well. It's how yeah, see, look, we've got 101 small hassies now, and we've got 100. Oh, we've got 100 large hassies as well. Uh, it's not going to be as game breaking as you think. It's just going to help us out with certain areas. It's going to make it a lot less grindy for me because we can focus on saving our money uh, for showing off some of the weapons because you do get money in this and you buy weapons and all that good stuff so if we have a little look at these small hassies this uh, small sized world famous energy drink will restore a very small amount of energy it says a very small amount of energy but it's really not uh, and we have a large hassie as well this also restores a small amount of energy. Again, they don't they actually restore a good chunk. So let's get moving and see if we can find out what the hell's actually happening around here. Nothing good, that's for sure. I don't know where the merman went. Maybe we'll bump into him later. Who knows? I repeat, I need an Easter unit now. Elliot Ballad, do you hear me? Barely. This is Elliot Ballad. Uh, we request D7 equipped rescue unit now. The location is. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm on vacation. I'm totally unarmed. So. <laughs> so? I need help too. <laughs> oh, great. Tell me your location, Elliot. All I can tell you is that I'm by a pier. Okay, Elliot. First, find an ID card. I'm sure there are a number of corpses around. You should be able to find one of them with an ID card. Oh! What happened? Uh, corpses? Did you say there are a number of corpses around? Where? Hmm. Yeah, the game's a little bit buggy as well. Um, he should have said that when it looked like he was chewing chewing gum. But the line carried on playing there. Uh, <laughs> this game's weird, man. A number of corpses, you say? Well, Elliot, we just saw a freaking asteroid like hit this uh, hit this place. So I think it's safe to assume that there's going to be a lot of corpses. So let's have a little look around, shall we? Well, there's definitely one or two corpses here. Hmm. I don't know what killed these guys, but I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna find out. I don't think it was magical unicorns. I think there's something a little bit more sinister going on. Probably. We've got some more bodies here. Yeah, more bodies. Well, at least we found the card. It's a good thing that there was one card just waiting for us. You know. Yeah, lots of corpses. Oh, look at this fellow. All right, the chief. You all right? How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, how do you like some of that? Huh? 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 Yeah, you don't like that much, do you? Right, that is combat in this game. It's janky, it's messy, but it kind of just about works. And this is how we get money. We beat money out of the enemies. Uh, each one of those is worth, I don't know how much, like $10 or something. We've actually started with 6.5k thereabouts, and that's because we've started with the amount of money that we finished the last game with. Which is kind of cool. Getting money in this game can be a bit of a ball lake. You you can grind for it because enemies always respawn. Uh, which sounds like a pain um, and it kind of is, but you need them to grind money. Um, there's a few different little secrets in this game too, which we will get to, I'm sure. So, strange mutant fellow. I mean, that's definitely something you don't see every day. But for now... Oh, hell. Big fucking mutant fellow. Oof. There's the merman. No, he's got legs. And he slides across the floor. That was close. Thanks for helping me. My name is Elliot G. Ballad. Where's Tim? Well, who are you? Dogs. I'm a captain of the SS Deanna. If you're Elliot, you must be with Tim. Tim is... Tim is what? Dead? I don't know. I <clears throat> don't know. I don't know? Is that Easter's answer? You know, Tim once told me he had a high-level Easter member as a friend. Where are you going? To the island. 
I am still a rescuer. There are people there who need help. <laughs> what a joke. Obviously, you're going to need good <laughs> help, like me. I can't let a wimp like you go alone. I have I no help. idea why the sounds are so far out of sync. This is a brand new yeah. disc. Well, it's not brand new, but I bought this just for the Let's Play because my disc wasn't working very well. Um, I everything, nothing else is out of sync. I okay, cool. I mean, sure, whatever, yo. So we now have dogs. Dogs is brilliant. Uh, he he's one of my favourite characters in gaming. Now the good, the the weird thing about this game, I should say, is we can change characters. We can change characters on the fly, pretty much any time we want. Um, and they do, they do actually control differently. Like dogs is slower, a lot slower. He has different weapons. He actually starts off with a bow gun, which is a lot more powerful than what we start off with. He cannot engage in melee combat as he is though. He but he can block. He can block damage. Uh, which for the majority of the game, the overwhelming majority of the game is absolutely useless and pointless. But there we go. Uh, so we are going to be playing most of the game as Elliot, but Dogs can actually push objects a little bit quicker, I believe, because he is stronger. So, we have a box here. Let's push it. Seems like a good thing to do. You find a box, you give it a push, don't you? And this actually leads us up here. So, we get a CO2 room key card and a handgun magazine. Ooh, well, I mean, it'd be nice if we had a handgun to put the magazine in. Uh, that would be some proper future tech thinking. All right, let's push this out of the way. Now Dogs has kind of fulfilled his usefulness for this part. Now the two characters get very different weapons which is a kind of cool little uh, little thing. Um, Dogs gets like the heavier, more beefier, more powerful weapons. Uh, but that's not to say Elliot doesn't get any powerful weapons. He does. He gets some juicy ones himself. We've got ourselves a visitor ID. And we have the handgun, which is Elliot's first um, first uh, ranged weapon. And it's not that bad. You know, it really isn't. It's, this isn't really one of those games where you pick up the handgun and eventually that gets out of date and shit. Because it's a handgun and you get better, more powerful weapons. I mean, it's a little bit like that. But for the most part, every weapon has its place. Some weapons are definitely not great and are just there for the fun factor, but the handgun is a fairly reliable weapon that we'll probably be using through most of the game. So we have the Gavel. Uh, what was it? The Chimera Arms Gavel Mark III. Uh, the KSA Gable Mark III. This semi-automatic handgun can hold up to 14 plus one rounds in a double column magazine of 45... Uh, millimeter cap bullets can also be used underwater kind of important so it's a 45 uh, it's is fairly powerful uh, we have 30 rounds for it now every weapon in this game you could only hold nine magazines for um, I don't know why they did that it's kind of strange but there we go uh, dogs bow gun is quite a bit more powerful than the handgun but it's a little bit more expensive to buy ammo for and doesn't hold as much it balances out just about personally i think the the handgun is more fun so that's the super bow manta ray uh, normally used for big game hunting this semi-automatic weapon uses magazines holding up to eight arrows but it's a bow gun so surely it should be firing bow gun bolts but let's not split hairs too much right so, every time we get to a new area, we'll have a map. Do you want to download the map? Yes, we want to download the map. Download complete. That is good. And we have these save stations as well. So, we're going to just dump our save there. Like so. Yes. There we go. Not bad game. Not bad. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, there are no penalties for saving the game. You know, it's, it's not Resident Evil. Um, there's no penalties for using herbs and all that kind of stuff, which I like it. You know, I like that. You don't have to collect ink ribbons and stuff. So, it, you know, it is a survival horror-esque 
Um, it was compared heavily to Resident Evil back in the day. And when it actually came out, I really thought this was like, this really is going to be the next gen Resident Evil sort of, sort of stuff. Um, and I was expect oh you little sod. And I was expecting, to be honest, like a whole series of Blue Stinger games. Uh, obviously we didn't know that the Dreamcast was going to, you know, be essentially dead on arrival. Um, I would have liked to have seen more Blue Stinger games because I like the gameplay. I like the idea that we can earn money and buy stupid weapons from vending machines. Hmm, Nephrim. Giant crabs. Ugh. Hmm. It's like some strange mutant T-Rex. Hopefully we don't bump into that later on. Nephilim. What the <laughs> hell is that? How do you know its name? I'm not sure. Oh, Your bad feeling is right. This. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love dogs. What the hell is that? Is this guy like back again? Yeah. Okay. This guy's like respawned instantly, which is curious. Usually they only respawn uh, when you exit the area and come back. So, for instance, if we wanted to farm this guy, I don't know why he would because he's a, a noob and pays out like nothing. Um, but if you wanted to farm, you just leave through the door and come back and you'll be here every single time. Can be annoying later on, um, but, you know, you really do want to collect money if you want to see all of the weapons in this game because they are so expensive. But if we finish the game enough times, we unlock a game called, uh, we unlock a mode called Mad Mode, uh, where we start with all the weapons and loads of money. I think we have unlimited ammo and all that good stuff. Uh, which is what I'm working towards as from what I can understand you, you have to complete the game in like five times in a row on the same save or something like that uh, But hey, that is why we're going new game plus Yeah, I don't know dogs this this place is foobar for sure um, This place certainly doesn't look like your ordinary town either Hmm it's like we have jaws. Ooh, ooh, yeah. What the fuck? What was that? What the hell? Over there. I can't believe it. Shooting from that far. No shit. Gene. <laughs> What's the big surprise? A woman? They exist. I thought they were legends. This is Janine over. You're great. If you're an ESA member, you'll definitely be ranked A+. <laughs> you're flattering me, but you won't get anywhere that way. You can get in here by taking the slope shuttle in front of you. If the shuttle is moving, that is. And forget it if you don't have an ID card. You tough girl. I like it, Janine. Who the hell is Janine? My kind of girl, so stay away from her. <laughs> what? There we go. Straight away, guys. We've got some, like, Resident Evil silliness. Um, Elliot's got the hots for her already, and all she's done is, like, save our life. I guess that's actually quite a significant thing to do. But, um, <laughs> yeah. We've had, like, a couple of words with her, and that's it. Elliot's, Elliot's totally smitten. Dogs has no idea who she is. Which is kind of interesting. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, and yeah, so so Janine's superpower in this game is that she's a woman. Um, yeah, yeah, we're not in the noughties here, guys. We're we're very much <laughs> in the early 2000s, and we just got slapped in the face by a tentacle. Tentacles are one of the only things that don't actually come back uh, once we kill them. There are there are a few enemies that once dispatched don't respawn. 
Uh, tentacles, obviously, being one of them. But they're very few and far between. The standard enemies always do respawn. So let's go check out these rooms through here. Now, one thing I like about the Retro Fighters as well is we do have the analog. Oh, God, we've got the analog triggers. But we also have, above them, digital triggers. So for a game like this that doesn't need the analog input whatsoever, it just relies on the, the digital press, man, it's so cool. It's so much better. We found a magazine of arrows anyway, so... Uh, we've also got a new map, which we can download. Let's check out the, uh, the vending machines, shall we? Man, in the crazy year of 2018, we can buy magazines of bullets from vending machines? Fuck yeah, we're gonna get some of these bad boys. Because we need bullets. Now, the amount of money we have seems like a lot of money. Like 6,000 sounds like a lot of money. It isn't. Okay, let's just be straight up, it isn't. And we can get a uh, drum of shotgun shells there as well, but we don't have a shotgun, so that seems fairly redundant. Now, there's also a wealth, a wealth of healing items in this game. Uh, hot dogs, fucking hamburgers, uh, hassies, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to probably buy one of each, because I think we can get a description. But obviously, we don't need to buy them. Now, what's the third vending machine have for us? The f oh, okay, so that's got small hassies, large hassies, and a sandwich. We're going to have the sandwich. There is so many healing items in this game, guys. It's kind of ridiculous. There's so many items in this game in general, uh, which I really like, to be honest. So let's have a look. We have a sandwich. What's in the sandwich? This ham and egg sandwich will restore some energy. Well, that's good. Hot dog. Info. This spicy hot dog will restore a huge amount of energy. Excellent. And a hamburger. 100% beef hamburger. This hamburger will restore all of... Oh, really? All of your energy? Now, there are some items that you can literally only get uh, in a couple of places in the game. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that's kind of blown my mind. A hamburger restores all of your health. Now, you can see our health bar down the bottom there next to our name. It's quite small. Dogs is bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can increase the size of our health. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking about, filthy animals. But we can indeed increase the size of our health bar. Uh, it is expensive, uh, but it is worth it. Absolutely worth it. And it's kind of weird and random how you even do that, but we'll cover that uh, in a later on video. Anyway, we are out of time, so I'm going to save it here. I will say thank you very much for watching. And when we come back, we're going to continue exploring and making our way to Janine. This has been a very talky, heavy episode because there's a lot to go over in this game. It is a survival horror game, but it is is—it's definitely its own unique thing. Uh, full of jank, but very rough around the edges. But there's a wicked game here if you give it the chance. It wasn't reviewed that well. It was kind of average and kind of mixed. But if you give this game a chance, there is so much to like. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and as always, till next time.